money. So my father owns three pubs in the capital region. And uh, I'd put money down that I'd get more money than anyone here in the last 19 years. But um, my brother actually chose to go vegetarian two years ago. And I always wondered why, because my eyes think my father can good food. So over Lent, he kind of convinced me. So I decided to give up meat for the last three months. And I honestly wake up feeling better. I wake up easier. I had more energy. I lost weight. I want to work, work out more. And I, uh, I think this presentation will, will tell you the reasons why that's true. Um, eating meat has a negative impact on your longevity and health. Um, obesity is a huge issue. A study of 60,000 men and women suggests that the more meat, the greater BMI. And you want a lower BMI if you want to be healthier. Up to a point, but um, vegetarian diets carry metabolic advantages uh, for the prevention of type 2 diabetes. On average, every vegetarian lost about 12 pounds where meat eaters actually gain weight uh, through the study. Alcoholism actually can be cured, which is something nobody really knows, but if you eat more vegetables, it can cure an addiction like caffeine, actually. And not as much drugs, as the study showed, but alcoholism, you can actually, if you wake up and you you have a less need for an addiction if you have just vegetables in your diet. It can cure coronary artery disease. Uh, veggie diets actually can and reverse coronary artery diseases, as well as cancers. Uh, breast cancer, colon cancer, mouth cancer can be cured and reversed by uh, vegetables. They help inactivate carcinogens. They uh, have antiviral and antibacterial effects. They have anti-inflammatory effects. They induce cell death. Uh, cancer cell death, and they inhibit tumor, tumor <coughs> blood formation. I actually have a family friend who uh, had brain cancer, and he got chemo and he got radiation, but he uh, it stopped the cancer, but it didn't reverse the cancer. He went on a strict vegetarian diet, and it actually cured the cancer completely out of his brain now, which I thought that's a crazy first-hand look at how vegetables can cure cancer. Um, cancer blood vegetables are power foods. The real name is our cruciferous vegetables. They have rich, they're rich in nutrients and vitamins C, E, and K, and they're rich in minerals. They're a great fiber source, which is uh, needed in a healthy diet. And also, they prevent cancer, which is why I come up here. They, um, they prevent lung, mouth, breast, uh, prostate, and colon cancer. And these are, you can find these in any market. They're not expensive. I'm not saying they're pennies, but they're not expensive. And that's uh, arugula, you can have a salad, that's cabbage, that's uh, radishes, and has wasabi. So you sushi eaters, if you put more, I know it's spicy, but if you put more wasabi on your sushi, it actually makes it a lot healthier for you. Um, why eating meat is bad? Uh, most processed meats, like at a McDonald's or Burger King or something like that, like the chicken nuggets, how they form them the way they do, they use something called meat glue. And meat glue actually can grow bacteria really easily, and also um, it's not easily processed by humans. It stays in your digestive, digestive tract for years, actually. Um, Eating meat can lead to cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Uh, swapping red meat for vegetables, you could argue that you have a lack of protein in that. But actually, if you eat more nuts, uh, that's actually better for you. And if you have 10 ounces of almonds, you have more protein in that than a protein shake after working out. Actually, Michael Phelps, when he worked out for the Olympics, he went on a strict uh, peanut butter protein diet. And that's all he did. He didn't have protein shakes or anything like that. He said peanut butter. I just saw his, his success. Um, all meats are injected today with, unless it's farm raised with uh, steroids and hormones. And um, chickens 50 years ago were half the size today, they did studies. And so that means over 50 years, the more steroids and hormones that were injected into a chicken, they actually have doubled the size in the last 50, 50 years. And it's not a good thing. It's actually, it's just filling your body with hormones and steroids. Um, you can get salmonella and E. coli if meat is undercooked. Uh, you, you can get both, and it's uh, it would lead to vomiting and kidney failure, which all ultimately could lead to death. And you've got all of you, I've heard of some cases around the world or in the U.S. where uh, people ate undercooked meat and, or eat uh, like canned meat that were, under, were cooked through at the, at the factory and they yeah, actually led to death. And something people don't know is uh, cattle are one of the two or three top environmental factors uh, negatively at global warming. They degrade the land, they contribute to climate change, they pollute the water and destroy biodiversity. Cattle rank with cars and uh, gas emissions. They emit 18% of uh, greenhouse gases in the world. So I mean, that's a big issue, too. If you stop eating meat, it will lower the amount of livestock that's needed, and um, there will be less gas. This is just a chart uh, comparing um, carnivores to herbivores to humans. And this is actually all true. Carnivores, where carnivores have claws, uh, 
herbivores have no claws and humans have no claws, obviously. Where carnivores have sharp front teeth for ripping flesh, humans just have flat teeth, as you know. Uh, where carnivores have no flat grinding teeth in the back, humans do, like herbivores, for grinding vegetables and uh, grains, that's what they're ultimately used for. And, um, and the intestinal tract on a carnivore is uh, smaller because it takes longer to digest uh, vegetables and grains. Why our intestinal tracts are longer, actually. Uh, this is a video on animal cruelty. This is actually, if you ever watch any of the, um, any of the Netflix documentaries on, on vegetarianism, this is where I saw this. And this is what actually drove me to be vegetarian for the last few months. I have a few animals, that's why I don't know if I can do more, I guess. The veal industry has much to hide, and it will go to extreme measures to conceal its cruel practices. When a farm sanctuary investigator documented conditions at veal farms in Wisconsin, a veal producer contacted law enforcement officials, angrily insisting that farm sanctuary's video be destroyed. Unfortunately, some of our videotape was erased, but some footage survived, and it shows the inhumane conditions that the veal industry wants to keep hidden from public view. A veterinary expert viewed this video and stated, there is nothing in the video footage that indicates a healthy or humane environment. Comfort is non-existent. The calves are held in shoes too narrow and too short to permit the animals to assume comfortable postures in lying down. Hygiene is very poor. Manure is spattered throughout the barn under the animal's hindquarters so that they must lie down in it. The majority are caked with manure. In some individuals, the manure skull has resulted in abrasions and dermatitis due to the inevitable breakdown of skin homeostatic mechanisms chronically plastered with stool. Across America, hundreds of thousands of calves are forced to endure intolerable cruelty to produce an unnecessary, inhumane product. There is no reason or excuse for this. Please. So basically what I was saying is that if you ever had veal peppers or veal parm or anything like that, the way they make veal is they keep them in crates where they can't move throughout the whole world. And that's that's how they live to get veal. So that's what I mean, if you think about that, if you if you even just if you anybody who eat, eat, eat veal, eats veal, if you cut down on the amount of veal you eat, I mean that that will probably reduce the amount of cattle like that. And I don't know, that that hit home with me because I'm an animal lover, but if any of you like animals and veal that too. Um, overfishing is a big problem in the world today. And um, overfishing is to continually, continuously catch more fish than the system can actually produce. In 1900, our oceans contained six times more fish. 90% um, of fish stocks are gone. And it's not saying that the 90% uh, of fish species are gone. It's saying things like tuna and cod. 90% of their species are, are gone, or 90% of their stock are gone now. In 2020, it's estimated that 40% of species that aren't endangered today will be, and that's in the, in the next decade. So these kind, of, these kind of things will affect our, our lifetime. It's not even our kids or our grandchildren. This will be our, our lifetime. You could argue that jobs will be affected if you uh, eat less fish, too. But if you eat less fish, then there will be more fish in the ocean for fishermen to be able to catch. So it, it won't affect their jobs. Like you can't get what it is. These are some famous vegetarians. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Clint Eastwood, Dr. Dre, Albert Einstein, Susan B. Anthony, and Rose Parks. And I mean, obviously, some of them uh, were shaped our country. So, I mean, I'm not saying be vegetarian because they are, but I mean, I think they all have good heads and shoulders. So, I mean, maybe they're on something. Um, obviously, in conclusion, if if I was to persuade anyone to have a even the slightest amount of less meat in the diet, that, that could have a huge impact on obesity in America, on longevity for people in America, um, on greenhouse gases, things like that. I mean, it impacts almost everything if you stop eating meat. So I was to persuade anyone for the littlest bit to eat a little bit less meat or fish, that would have a huge impact on a lot of things. Any questions? <coughs> So you don't eat any fish? 
No. Okay, so it's, you're, you're truly a... Yeah. Is that called vegan? Uh, vegan is if you don't eat dairy. I think pescatarian is you eat fish, vegetarian is if you eat nothing, but you eat dairy. Okay, so you eat dairy. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe you eat dairy. Okay. Uh, just like it's hard for me to make the distinction. Mm -hmm. Just give me an idea. That's kind of quick. You don't have to give me everything. But, you know, a daily diet. I mean, breakfast, you do all. Uh, breakfast, you can have eggs. You know, that's, that's vegan, too. You can have eggs. Uh, I don't eat breakfast a lot, but lunches, I eat a lot of um, pizza. Actually, I have a ton of course, pizza. You can have uh, pastas, a lot of pasta I eat now. Um, just anything like cheese or pepper-based, like quesadillas, things like that. You just get cheese and have a lot of those, things like that. Uh, salads. That's basically what most of my diet, is, especially here, and a lot of those things. Okay, and, and that you're still you still feel you're losing weight on, yeah, on, 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 a, a, on a high carb kind of yeah. thing. Uh -huh. It's taking the other stuff out. Though. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Thank you.